Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Oceanic Pro League. I'm, of course, Max Atlas Anderson, joined by the wonderful Christopher Popper, Smithy Smith. And my goodness, sudden fear did not feel great after that loss to Legacy. That was very decisive. And this is the Legacy we're expecting to see coming in here. Had a little bit of a rough showing against the Chiefs, and we're about to catch up with them coming into our next match. But first, let's have a look at our MVP from that game. And who can go past Choo Choo's there in the mid lane? I mean, no one can play the pick comp as well as Legacy did that. It was just a wonderful pick comp play. And it was the solo play from Chuchus. When he blew that heal at level two on the Xerath, they just continue to snowball the advantage. Excellent assassin play. Yeah, he's just ridiculously good. He gets the hands on one of those 100 to zero champions. And, you know, the likes of Cinder and LeBlanc seem to be right in his wheelhouse. And we'll see what he picks up this game as we head into Legacy taking on Avant Guard. And this one's incredibly exciting. A rematch of our finals, grand final, of course, going to five games that Avant Guard managed to pip right at the post there. And, man, there have been some changes since then. Now, you were there casting on that day that massive 3 2 win to propel Avant to that big. Uh, regional final title, but as you mentioned, especially in the AD carry position, changes on both sides right here. Yeah, there have been changes, of course. Tallywacker moving from that top lane, he was pivotal in that victory, managing to secure so many kills on that Riven in the top lane in the final game, and now moving into the AD carry role, and we have to say, looking fairly comfortable here, because that Callista play in the last game was brilliant. Yeah, channeling some of those aggressive top lane mechanics into just those short range burst or just reset champions like Callista, like the Graves, getting in people's faces and picking up the kills. Yeah, certainly doing well. Whereas on the other side, we've got Mizui coming in for Avantgarde, taking the place of Veritas, who was arguably their star player over there, now rank one in Challenger solo queue on the North American ladder. Yeah, absolutely, and it's, it's going to be a bit a bit of a hard step up there. Really needs to take on a carry role, because that was ver what yeah. Veritas was to that team. Struggled a bit on day one, of course. Avant haven't picked up a win yet, right? And what a time it would be right now to repeat that big win over Legacy. Yeah, and so they really have to try and channel it here as we hop into Champion Select. Zed already banned away from Choo Choo's and Cassidy most likely aimed at Kensty here in the mid lane. Of course, bad game, lol. We haven't seen much from him. Of course, a sub for Porky there in the top side of the map. And Avant Garde, they're missing their top lane rock, but we'll see whether um, bad game, lol, can have a good game this time. Absolutely. I mean, he struggled, especially in the first series we saw him in last week, but actually stepped up and was very capable in the second. So he's definitely not been a huge problem, but it's not Porky. It's not the yeah. rock in the top they're used to. And when they've got that change lineup, it's just a struggle to have to be so hamstrung so early in the season. Yeah, it's quite difficult. And they need to have Porky for that strong team fight control because Chelby, he'll engage anything. And they really need to have someone there controlling what goes on, having that big front line there. But Bear Game, well, he's got big shoes to fill and we'll see whether he can fill them this game. As LeBlanc and Rexler are going to be the last two bands for Avant Garden. Legacy Esports still thinking about their last one, but Lissandra being taken off the board here as well. And just a really strong pick. And Ari, an intelligent one. Kensty, an avid Ari player. And Ari just so strong on 5.2. So much targeting of the mid lane right here. Five mm. potential mid lane bans come out right here. So we might even see an early blind pick mid just because a lot of the yeah. flavor champs are gone already. Xerath is an option there. Bad game, lol. Opting to... Go into a nah here, and this is a dangerous pickup. We saw perfections from Direwolves against Bad Game Lord just destroy him on that Aurelia in this exact matchup. And Carbon now able to look at the highly coveted J4 pick. And Aurelia is available right here, so we could see a repeat of that bad day out for Bad yeah. Game Lord on the top lane. But as you point out, it was actually against the Javan last series and did so well on Rek'Sai right there. Bomi not being able to put out the early skirmish pressure we'd expect from let alone a Javan, but a Javan with Skirmish's Saber not living up to the name of that item at all. He's going to have a bit of fun here with some of the hoppers, though. <laughs> yeah, just uh, switching over so, to some very interesting pickups here. The Victor Hover, definitely a shout-out to Minky Whale, still affiliated with the team. Arguably uh, my favorite Victor player here but, in the Oceanic region. It's such a deep cut. He's been a top laner for so long, but still so associated with oh, Victor. Yeah. From I, in fact, associate um, Minky Whale with the Rabbitons death cap. I find I just immediately affiliate him with that item just because he always picks it up. But the lock-ins are going to be Morgana and Lee Sin. First time we've seen Lee Sin coming out of carbon so far. 
And we'll see what he manages to do with it. Of course, every jungler has to be able to play Lee Sin, but it's not necessarily Carbon's comfort champion there in the jungle. No, definitely not a comfort champion, but definitely something that he can he can put to good oh, use yeah. right here. And Chelby, the jungle pool is very strong in this game. No bans coming out. He's already shown the Jarvan off, so Jarvan is available. Obviously happy to have the Jarvan versus Lee Sin matchup if you're willing to leave it up right here. But the one thing we haven't seen so far is the Nidalee jungle. And we've seen a couple people thinking about, although Kensti, a wonderful mid lane, That's what I was gonna say, mid lane yeah. Nidalee player for forever and a day. With that lock in, though, it might be our first jungle Nidalee. This could be exciting. Maybe Chelby just uh, playing with our minds a little bit. We don't know where that Nidalee is necessarily going, but Callista going to be locked in here, and that could be a dangerous pickup. Although that Lee Sin already being shown, so no Vise in order to counter pick that one out, really lock down that Callista. Unless, you know, they put. Lee in somewhere else. You can put him in the top lane, chuck by in the jungle. Who so knows? we've seen three games out of Taliwaka. Two of them were on that Callista. A win and a loss right now. Yep. Graves is the other champion is shown. He's going to mull over the Sivir right here. Staying with the short range flavor. I don't know if we're ever going to see the Taliwaka Caitlyn. We'll have to we'll have to see if that I'm ever sure comes can out. Play it. I've actually witnessed him playing the, um, the Jinx in solo queue. He was actually playing that one last night. So maybe the Jinx, although she can just switch over to Pow Pow. And uh, she's short range too. That's so true. He yeah. always has the option. There's always the option, absolutely <laughs> right here. But I do like the Civic because you look down the lineup right here, especially, let's assume it's going to be a support Morgana, especially with the Aurelia lock in right here. I mean, we've seen Morgana's in mid and top all over the, the place. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Of course, Tallywacker, known for his aggression and early power plays in that top lane. Now on Draven in the bottom lane. If there's any champion that you could associate with sort of Riven in the top lane, what would you take then to be that level of aggression in the bottom lane? I'd say Draven. It's all out aggression right here. And I guess he's banking on the fact that in the first three picks, no one was really picked up that could really deal with that Draven pick. There wasn't the target CC or the burst potential coming out. Of course, if Nar gets in the right position, he can really hurt anyone. But they're going to have to really address that right here. Juni might pick up the Leona. That at least gives them a bit of long-range targeted CC. But we've seen across scenes, if Draven can really get going, I mean, we have to mention Crystal right here. Oh, yeah. He's been really sending shockwaves around the world with his Draven play. Interesting to see the OPO also being the highlight of some great Draven play. Yeah, and Tallywack also just a gifted mechanical player as well. So you could imagine able to eke out the last bit of DPS from catching all of those axes and really dancing around these fights, getting all of that damage down. And... A Draven that gets ahead early is a disgusting thing to watch, and we've witnessed it before, and my goodness, it was dangerous. But Kensti going to be picking up a long-range mage there in the mid lane, not going for his assassin flavor that he can go for, but similar to a lot of the champions that he really enjoys, and we'll see how he goes here, because, you know, having a Xerath and a Nar on the team, that's decent synergy there with the Nar ultimate and all of the CC you can bring down because then you can just land your skill shot so easily. And absolutely, and, and it's also a safe blind pick mid. You know, he was forced to blind yeah. pick the mid lane right here. Xerath doesn't have any real bad matchups right here. You could say maybe Kassadin because Kassadin's banned out right now. There's so many mid lane bans. We mentioned five mid lane bans. Most of the champions that can deal with Xerath are already going out of the pool right here. One left. Whoa, Cassiopeia being picked up for the mid lane. Choo Choo's going to be hopping on that champion. And this game just got interesting because, of course, Cassiopeia, not with the longest range, nope. but in the hands of Choo Choo's, you can never really rule him out. If you ever confirm that Q damage right there, it doesn't matter if you're playing from a long range away. If, even if it's the max range Q, the burst of movement speed into all that Twin Fang damage is just really painful coming out of that Cassiopeia right now. At the moment, at least, he's mulling over some super aggressive summoner spells with the double utility movement spells right here to chase down anyone. So even if, an, if, even if they rotate this uh, Cassiopeia into an off lane after the turrets are down, you not want to go not want to go one v one against that Cassiopeia. Oh no! And you can imagine it would also be used for that escape because Shelby he's really going to want to be ganking and see whether he can when he's sitting on the Nidalee jungle, which we haven't seen Shelby play before. Of course, sort of a new flavor here in the jungle now that these large monster camps can actually be hunted by mm -hmm. that passive. Sort of seen a eek through the ranks of solo queue, but this is the first time I personally have seen her in competitive play. And it's usually that AP jungle Nidalee, you know, to have the massive burst potential. The one thing Nidalee does provide in her ganks is gap close and burst damage. You hit that uh, you hit that spear and then get into the melee range with the targeted jump and can do good burst damage. You mentioned already Xerath's stun. Yeah. Theoretically, there's a lot of burst damage coming out in the mid lane right there. Against Nar, it's a bit more situational, but he kind of has to rely completely on his lanes to set up kills, because otherwise, just no CC available from the jungle Nidalee ganks. Yeah, it gets a little bit difficult, and we'll see whether Chelby does go for sort of an invade-style Nidalee. We've seen a lot of Nidalees utilize the fact that they can get around so quickly, 
in order to really put pressure on the enemy jungler. And we know that Shelby, he has no fear about entering the enemy jungle and he'd be more than happy to mess things up for Carbon on his way around, who really likes to be in control of his lanes and shock all from the jungle. And if he gets disrupted, it might be a way to get through um, Legacy's tight early game. And kind of the interesting other flavor that Nidalee brings is in a Siege, they've got Zerath and Nidalee, so so much long-range poke. The Spears still do very respectable damage, but still have a lot of potential in a Siege set, in a siege right there. They have a decent front line for the Callista to move around the back with that Nar and the Leona. So there's a lot of team comp synergies coming out right here. It's just the Nidalee's kind of an all-or-nothing pick. If it gets going, it can be massive. If it struggles... Yeah, could be a problem, but we want to hear what you guys think. Of course, it is difficult to tell both team comps looking incredibly strong, but head over to Twitter and let us know using the hashtags, hashtag L uh, uh, Legacy win and hashtag AV win, Absolutely. depending on which you'd prefer, because I'm personally unsure, because Chelby showing us something new, and Nidalee can have a lot of control, and we haven't mentioned Mizui now picking up the Callista. Yeah, it's a different pick for him right there. Missouri, we usually think of as a corky main. He's a wonderful corky player. Um, really struggled on the Ezreal last week. That's the only other champion we've seen him on right here. Interesting to see if his Callista's on board with that corky or if he'll struggle on just, you know, something out of his comfort zone. Yeah, and having um, Johnny as well on this, Leona, we saw it working to great effect against Legacy. But that can be difficult playing something that Legacy is so comfortable with. They, of course, showed incredible amounts of prowess on that particular duo in their last game, they might actually know how to beat it as well as play it. I guess kind of the, the thing they need to do is keep down this Aurelia, because if you have an Aurelia, you can mm. aggressively dive onto the Callista and maybe isolate the Callista from a fight if she can't spread her Ren to the, the back line with the Hurricane, for example. If she's really struggling to get through a frontliner, we've kind of seen Callista's super struggle. I remember, of course, J.K. Smithy's Renekton so well isolating her Callista and really stopping her from spreading her damage. If she's able to free hit, you know, if it was, say, a double AP comp with no true frontliner, Callista can be massively strong. We've seen that across the scenes. It's only when the true tank can really get a big stack of armor and shut down her movement that she really struggles in a fight. Yeah, that's true. But let's have a look back here. Of course, Legacy playing against Chiefs in their first match, which was sort of the big one, arguably our two biggest teams, and the Chiefs coming out victorious. And it seems to me that, especially considering their match against Sudden Fear, they're looking a whole lot better. And I think it comes down a lot to Carbon and Egym now being on sort of engage-heavy champions, knowing what they're fantastic at. And the Janna didn't seem to really be as useful, although EGM's seen a lot of success mm -hmm. on that champion. Now with the Morgana in his hands and last game with the Leona, looking a lot better because he can go in, he can start the fights for his team. There's just so much more initiation flavor when those are the two people they really rely on for the initiation. Reliably, it's been Carbon and it's been EGM. And they've got those champions available to, to them right here. They've got a very proactive skirmish comp in the mid game. The one thing you can say about that first match against Chiefs, they went very reactive. They went for the Hecarim top, they went for the Lulu mid, they cleared waves and they were kind of looking for a late game that never came. Ever since then, we've seen the much more aggressive champions out of, out of the Choo Choo's, the Syndras, the LeBlancs yeah. of the world. They've been trying to make things happen and that's been hugely successful for them right here. I'd be surprised to see them again in the season go for those more passive games because it's when they're taking it to the enemy team that Legacy really looked like the team that propelled Oceania to those wildcards. Yeah, and they also, you know, must take a lot of time looking through the games that they may have struggled in and really identifying exactly what went wrong and how they can change it because the teams on comps that we've seen afterwards have been sort of somewhat similar going for this sort of pick flavor, trying to go for that sort of mid-game damage, and it's been working so far, and until it doesn't work, they're going to keep trying to go for that because that's what makes them comfortable. Absolutely. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly right. So let's hop into the game, ladies and gentlemen, with Avant-Garde. Now taking on Legacy, a real test here for Avantgarde as they had a rough 0-2 week. Legacy now 2-1. Avantgarde picking up the blue side and Legacy on the red for this matchup. Mizui, he's going to find a snake in this mid lane. It definitely hasn't let up for Avantgarde. A really tough first four outings for them. It'd be, it'd be a real big deal if they couldn't get a win on the board. It could be very difficult for them. And I really like the pickup of Ghost here on Choo Choo's just because you get the movement speed boost already from landing a Q and he's going to be so fast on this snake. And if he can itemize the Rylai's in there for the consistently refreshing 35% oh, yeah. slow on that Twin Fang, I mean, you're never going to stop chasing down someone when you have such a burst of movement speed and you're going to be slowed down to a crawl. 
Yeah, and we can see not too many aggressive starts. Of course, Choo Choo's playing very far up his mid lane, has spotted a couple of members here, but no one going to be going for any invades, no lane swaps to be coming in. And do you think that that could be a recommendation that we might go for here as we see that Mizui actually heading towards that top side? You, you really want to lane swap here against Draven. Draven is he's just a lane bully. That's where he excels, even more so than Caitlyn. It's just a wonderful laning champion right there. So especially Callista, who looks for those extended trades with orb walking with those mini jumps. You're never getting an extended trade with Draven that you like. So it makes sense to opt out of a 2v2 right here. Yeah, but it looks like Legacy were pretty well prepared here. Picking up that Aurelia, of course, does really, really well in these 2v1 situations. Nara, of course, not so bad either. But Legacy, they are going to be prepared. And I think it'll be about getting those Adoration stacks to pay off throughout this mid-game when Legacy can sort of force skirmishes around this map. It is interesting that they were completely able to initiate this lane top with no extra information from the Legacy right here. If they had gone for the aggressive invade for wards, really got those lane wards down, they could have potentially got everything. A decent 1v1 matchup and a very favorable 2v2. With this lane swap, it just gives Avant, and especially Mizui, a little bit more time to breathe. And on the other side, though, Legacy wastes no time reacting to it, and Cardred going to be coming around with Carbon here, helping him with the red buff and picking up a little bit of experience for himself. The pings are going down onto that buff, and it looks like Avant-Garde are clued in on as where Legacy are going to be about this map and we'll see what happens as far as the first early game move and do you think that it might be on Shelby here of course a bit of a barometer for his team to really sort of get avant-garde on off on the right footing it's very difficult to do that on nidalee and if we look at the mini map here she might have a bit of a skirmish on her hands could be a little bit of an issue as carbon has discovered shelby so we're going to throw down his trinket just to see whether he can snipe away this red buff going to spear it in the back of the skull actually as two members of legacy are here and this is very dangerous. Bad Game Lol is coming around. He's blown his teleport, actually, trying to get to that bottom side. Egypt's come around here as well. There might be a fight over here as Carbon's going down very low. Kensty throws out that Arcano Pulse, and Carbon picks up the red buff for his second now of the game. And Legacy looking to three buff Avant Garde very early on. You have to say, Avant Garde, their rotational play there, especially in the terms of the jungle, was really lacking. Because look what they're. It's important to track the fact that it's the Legacy bot lane that are in the bot lane right now. And with the lane swap, there's more members of Legacy on the bottom half of the map than there is from Avant Garde. That's just a reality of a lane swap right there. So there was always the potential for four Legacy members to come in on that red buff, and only three could potentially defend it from Avant with their bot lane and top. So in that outnumber situation, you need to part to the enemy jungle of course, in this situation, it was down, but that was the only option to be able to pick a buff. Oh my goodness, look at these twin fans coming through on top of Kensty, even gets poisoned at the end, and Choo Choo's able to force Kensty completely out of lane. Yeah, and Legacy aggressively invading right here. Chelby's oh, in trouble. the flash afterwards as well as he gets slowed down by the Equilibrium Strike. Could Carbon be going for first blood here as Chelby's getting taken down so low? Choo Choo's poisons him, he's gonna fall! It's the red buff from Carbon and first blood. Legacy have completely undone Avant's early pathing right here with that invade, with the aggressive three buff right here, and now picking up first blood as well. Nidalee needs to get ahead in the jungle, or she even struggles to kill camps. It's the neutrals that are going to come in for Legacy as well. Huge early win for this team. Yeah, being able to pick up the dragon here as well as Tallywack are going to throw some big old axes at it, and it's going to fall down without a fight here, of course. Avant Garde need to wait for Shelby to be there to be available, and going to be very, very difficult now. That first dragon going to go down. Of course, 6% stats, not too meaningful here in the early stages of the game, but Legacy are going to be more than happy taking away that big objective already. And it shows just how smart Legacy are. That actually, cast, uh, Carbon just dinged three from picking up that dragon right He was actually behind in levels to Chelby because of the strong jungle follow coming up. But there's so much CC, gap close, and even execution damage coming out of the Lee Sin Aurelia that the jungle follow was just hugely successful there for Legacy. And Juni now actually coming down to help bad game lol out, leaving Mizui in that 1v1 situation. Always difficult to do here with a Callista who relies on having that lane partner there in order to really utilize her kit. Absolutely. She's going to try and hold the wave as much as possible to deny Aurelia CS. Because Aurelia just entering top lane for the first time right here. In no rush given where the wave's at. But she'll just try and harass this uh, as much as possible as we tally her down bottom. He's Draven, so he's going to get every order when he can to trade. Oh yeah, even taking a turret shot, but he's going to be more than happy and managed to hit him with an axe. Definitely worth on the side of Tallywacker. Drops an axe, just one. He's not too worried, just going to press Q yet again. And 
Bad game, Lol and Johnny just have to sit back because there's no way they can enter a lane here against this Draven. So you might wonder, you know, just going back at this level one action right here in the jungle. As you see, bad game, Lol's going to eat a bit more damage right here. But why did, why did this game kind of pan out the way it did in the first few minutes? You notice that Bad Gamer had to teleport bottom, cut short the jungle follow because Tallywacker and Ejim were pushing very aggressively in the bot lane, whereas we saw the freeze coming out from Mizui. So he had already blown his teleport. The jungle follow had ended. That's why, again, that started everything. That's when the invade came in. The numbers were unbalanced. But Legacy basically ruled the roost for the first five minutes with their rotations. And Avant, in trying to catch up, have already found themselves in a gold hole. It will be very difficult for Avant to find their way back in. But I want to talk about Draven and Callista here because we haven't seen too much of Callista but can put out an incredible amount of especially AoE damage here in the later stages of this game. And if Tallywacker and Mizui, let's say they go even here, as far as a late game situation, who's going to be more useful out of these champions? I mean, you definitely take, uh, in this matchup especially, you definitely take a late game Callista over a late game Draven. But if Draven can get the snowball going, which uh, is a big if, um, he's going to be able to farm very freely right here. You have to expect the first passive proc is going to be a massive burst of gold for Tallywacker as he stacks up that adoration. I mean, Draven is a very risky carry in a fight. Not to say that Callista is safe, but of course has those mini resets, the mini jumps right there for mobility. And there's not that strong a, a front line coming out from Kaldred right here. It's only really Kaldred in the front line, probably Carbon to some extent as well. But if able to free hit at the back lane with no one able to gap close, it's going to be very, very hard for uh, Taliwaka to match Mizzou in a fight. Well, we can see the bottom outer turret is going to fall down here for Legacy. Managing to, managing to secure that one, and Kensti very low on health, picks up a blue buff. Chuchu, as you can see, has so much power, that Miasma clearing out these waves here as well. And he's healthy, he's managed to pick up his tier, does have a ruby crystal here as well. And that could now be going towards that giant spell to possibly begin the makings of O'Reilly's Crystal Scepter, like you were mentioning there, Papa Smith. And this is the first, one of the few matchups uh, that Zareth has where he's actually completely unfavored, even in terms of CS right here. Even though he has the long range, he has to basically forego auto attacking at all, and he doesn't have the AP to instant clear until later in the game right here, so he will be denied off CS. Probably about 10 to 15 is the par, but already a 22 CS being opened up by Choo Choo's. Yeah, and Choo Choo's just playing so far up this lane as well, not afraid of the Nidalee ganks that won't be able to lock him down. It relies on Kensti landing that stun, and Shelby, he's going to be spotted by Carbon here. Sonic Wave's going to land. He's trying to pounce out of the way. The Miasma to come through. Choo Choo's with so much damage and picks up a kill for himself on this uh, Cassiopeia. And Shelby skirmishing is the one thing that Nidalee really struggles on. Any sort of invasion, her low base stats are a big problem, and that's what Legacy are preying upon right here. They're so aggressive in the enemy jungle. There's no safe pink wards down from Avant right here, and realistically, Chelby can't even enter his own jungle. No, and Tallywacker is in fact going to pick up that red buff as well. So this Draven, no one on Avant's team can go near him. And the interesting thing right here is you say, all right, why don't we usually see AD carries so aggressively staying in lane, even overextended right here? They're not worried about the Nidalee jungle pressure at all. She's a damaged jungler. A da get damage ganking jungler who's behind. Realistically, they can shrug off her damage right here, and Carbon's just going to sit aggressively. Oh, Chelby's ac actually going to find Carbon here. Right of the Arcane to come through. Can he land the dots, the teleport to come down? And Chelby picks it up with a spear. Cardred, nothing he can do. Yeah, Chelby gets himself in the game with the kill right there. Still behind in level, still struggling, but a big win for Avant to at least pick up a kill to halt this momentum. Yeah, Kensi not going to land any skill shots here as Chelby's found his way around. Is going to land the spear. Oh, beautiful petrifying gaze. And Chelby takes so much damage. The Primal Surge helping out the Cardron with the Equilibrium Strike. And Tallywacker going to be upset that that Whirling Death didn't pick up the kill. Yeah, sent it in from downtown. Couldn't pick up at least an assist for his trouble right there. But the fast push is on right here. We've got a lot of people trying to help them push in this midway. Yeah, Cardron coming down here as well. Bad Game Lord does have some time with that top outer turret. And Kadrid forced off. It needs to go and deal with this big guy up here in the top lane. He does have a giant spell to his name as well. Just the phage here for Kadrid. So bad game wall not having a bad game at all this stage, despite his name. And we need to see Avant really try and get some vision back in there. You see Juni's trying, but of course putting down a ward in a pink. That'll get denied right here. The second dragon is up. They have the timer here to Avant, but realistically with no wards whatsoever down, it's going to be so hard to try and engage anything here. 
Spear going to land onto Carbon. Shelby wants to try and get a steal if he can. Carbon actually takes half of his health from the Dragon, which was started up. And Legacy actually forced back. Yeah, they're smartly grouped here to try and deny as much vision as possible. They're going to get some in. Bad Gang Law has a teleport up. No teleport up to, for Cardred right here. So maybe that's why Legacy are backing off right here, because there is the potential for the 5v4. Yeah, and Mizui, he's going to come down here to this bottom side. It's a dangerous location. Here be dragons, Mizui. You have to be careful. But, of course, Tallywacker not quite in lane yet. And Johnny, you can imagine that as soon as these guys see Tallywacker, they're just going to remove themselves from the area. Yeah, Mass is, of course, farmed very well right here. Is 18 CS behind the Draven, but given the matchup, you can tell it wasn't a 2v2, given it's only that smaller disadvantage right there. We've finally seen the 2v2, but Kajit has the red in top, so it's going to deny away. And they can overextend quite freely right here because they have so much, they've had so much aggressive vision right down. But it started to dissipate, so they have to be careful. And Shelby, even in levels to Carbon here, as Carbon's going to try and take away this ward, does get the last auto attack on it and just safeguards his way out after taking a spear. The rest of Legacy have rotated around. There is a teleport available from Bad Game Law, but he doesn't have the rage, the spear to find the dragon, but not going to be able to secure the kill and Legacy now with their second. You could tell from the positioning of Leona and Callista in the bottom line, they weren't looking to contest that objective. I would imagine that even if the rage was up, they realized that the moment they're outmatched. It's now a two and a half thousand gold lead for Legacy right here. Their champions are definitely relatively powered up, not the Blade of the Rune King competed by Maz yet. So the AoE damage, probably not going to come in given that he's going to start with the Blade of the Rune King. Yeah, well, of course, uh, a Hurricane does build out of two daggers as well. Might be deciding to go for a Bilgewater Cutlass into that one, but you're exactly right. Looks like the Blade of the Ruined King to come through first, and we'll see whether this one's going to work out. Of course, we've seen a whole lot of different builds to come through for Callista. You can never say which one's the best and which one isn't, because all of them have had mixed results. And if I, have a, if I'm a, if I was a betting man, I'd definitely say it's going to be the Hurricane second right here, maybe because they have the Xerath, because they have fairly respectable wave clear. They don't have to rush to pick up that Hurricane. Maybe looking for a bit more trading power with the Blade of the Rune King first. And you can imagine trading power is something that they're definitely going to need as Tallywacker is going to be wanting to go aggressive at all times. As Mizui just not wanting to go near him. He's just going to back away. You see the pressure in mid lane right here. Egyms, Rome is already on. We saw in the previous game his Leona gank very early into the game after his first shot with mobility boots set the tone for that lane and really caused... Uh, a situation where Chuchus was completely in the ascendancy in the mid lane against Paps. It, this situation, he hasn't actually needed to do that. There's already been the natural advantage for Cassiopeia in this lane. And yeah, you called it. The Rylays coming out first. Yeah, and interesting first by here, of course. Cassiopeias don't necessarily go for that CC until generally later on, but wanting to go straight for it. After that tier, is going to have that Seraph's Embrace coming through relatively soon as well because she spams so many abilities. You're going to be able to stack that tier up with relative ease. On the, mini oh, on the mini map, we do see Avant smartly grouping up their red buff. The first two were contested and taken away by Legacy. So it's smart to get the pink wards down. It's a good adaptation right here. They're trying to stop any invade coming in from Legacy. And yep, it's been successful. You see Carbons away from them on the map. Yeah, and that's actually three pink wards here. Is that almost too much? Um, resource spent in just securing their own red buff? So if this was the previous series from Legacy where they had the LeBlanc, they had the Fed Assassin, the three pink wards would be just enough. It would be just enough to deny any picks. <laughs> but with the slight difference in comps right here, especially this early in the game, maybe it will provide value in another over another 10 minutes. But uh, that's 300 gold invested just to keep up their red buff. Yeah, and Legacy actually rotating around here to this top side. Oh, Dark Binding catches Bad Game Law in a bounce. Beautiful aim. They're not going to be able to capitalize, but Ejim just showing off his skills. Absolutely. Got the skill shots on down, Pat. The roam continues right here. Choo Choo's got that Rileys right now. What I'd like to see is to actually rotate Choo Choo's into one of these side lanes, because with Flash Ghost and a Rileys, you hit one Q, you confirm any poison, and people are going to die. Oh, yeah. Nice rotational play from Avant Garde. They are going to be able to protect this top outer turret. Tallywacker more than happy just hanging around in this lane on his own. You haven't really seen much from him, of course. No one really wanted to give him the time of day on the side of Avant-Garde, rightly so as well. But we'll see whether he can get going towards this mid to late game because if it continues this with uh, Draven on 0, 0, 0 for the rest of the game, I mean, inherently not going to be utilizing that passive and may actually be considered a little bit behind. Uh, of course, the stacks are building up and not dissipating right here, especially if he dies before he can cash in. It's yeah. a lot of potential gold wasted right there. 
But I mean, legacy in general, you have to say the pressure has been taken off the pedal a little bit right here. The, yep. the pink wards have been successful in at least stopping any snowball coming out from legacy, but there's still a lot of this game left. There is a lot of this game left, but if the game from legacy just before is anything to go on, and things could be looking dangerous here for Avangardas. Kensti, he's going to get poisoned and just die as Johnny going to be hanging out. And we're going to go to a quick pause, ladies and gentlemen, as we have a slight disconnection. But the players are going to be trying to get back into this game. And Kensti, dead again. And Choo Choo's just looking on form today. And yeah, the Rylas does double up with that extra health pull. The extra 500 health helps with the aggressive turret dies right there. And again... Confirmed one Q, you can flash away, but against a flash goes Cassiopeia, you're going to die. Yeah, it's, there's no escaping from that one. You're going to need to be in your fountain, I think, in order to escape that. And even then, I probably wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, absolutely. Things can get dangerous. Yeah, you know, slowly venture back from the fountain, <laughs> considering his <laughs> options for next fight. This is not many options against uh, someone that can reapply the Rylai's every 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds when you confirm those Qs right there. It's an impressive build from the Cassiopeia. It's a 1v1 specialist item, but it's so, so good in that situation. Yeah, and what is the answer here that needs to come through from Avant-Garde to really keep down this legacy lineup? They've got so many sort of volatile members, of course, looking at Tallywhacker and Choo Choo's that need to be dealt with. Do they have the tools? They have the Siege. The group Siege is actually very strong from Avant right here, and it's the long laning that's going to really cause the struggle right here. If they're letting... Um, the Cassiopeia get in a 1v1 situation in the side lane, they're doing it wrong. They really want to group, focus down objectives as much as possible, specifically those structures, and trade upon the strengths of their comp because Legacy are really pushing the limits of theirs. Yeah, they really are. And picking up early dragons here as well, making sure that they have that neutral objective snowball to go along with this one. I mean, the first one that you know Avant-Garde are going to have the ability to contest is probably the third or fourth dragon. And that's almost unheard of. And only the, really the second one is one you can afford to skip over. It just gets worse from there as people get positioned towards the fifth. And the third has all those rotational uh, movement speed advantages that you pick up right there. Yeah. So the first two, you can, you can afford to lose them. The 6% if you pick it up in late game is just as potent. Yep. But the third one's oh so important. Yeah, and the 6% of course not meaning as much in the early stages of the game when you don't have as many statistics to get 6 percenterized. That's a, that's a technical term. I coined that one, 6% arise. Do you like it? Multiplicative, also a fun word that we can use to talk about <laughs> how good that bell is. Oh, that's an actual word. I'm oh. not into that. <laughs> that's, that's not my bag. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. We are still going to be waiting for this game to get back underway, but Kensty in the death chamber, a little bit unfortunate. Arcano Pulse just not really able to clear out these waves just yet, and he needs to get some items because if they want to stall this one out, it's almost on Kensty. And again, it's, you can see the diff there's so inherently different champions to Xerath and Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is going to play in the, that short range, try and get the slows on, confirm that poison and go in, whereas Xerath, he's happy to do damage at 1,100, 1,200 range right out the back right there. So because it's been those skirmishes, because we haven't seen the extended team fights or the sieges, we're seeing completely the advantages that Cassiopeia's kit naturally will have over Xerath's. And it's going to take a few AP items for the instant wave clear to come out. And then things will get just that little bit better for the Xerath. Yeah, and hopefully he can get there because, of course, a lot hinging off this one. Bad game lol. Haven't seen too much from him. Had a little bit of an unfortunate experience in the early stages as we hop back into the game. Tallywhacker just farming up here on the top side. But bad game lol. Still 0, zero, zero Has been farming up very nicely on this Nar, And we know his potential. Of course, Nar is a ridiculously strong champion. Yeah, I mean, very competitive CS right here. We've seen this matchup blow out a few times, but it's even right here. Try to be getting damaged gank into Kadrid, but won't be able to take down that tanky Aurelia. Yeah, and actually Kadrid having a bit of a giggle here as well as Johnny's going to fall down in the mid lane as Choo Choo's more than happy to tank up this turret. Has so much health with that Rylai's now completed. And I didn't really see what happened there in the mid, but you have to think that it may have been the Petrifying Gaze. Yeah, the Petrifying Gaze is on cooldown right here. The burst damage coming out in the chase. Again, we keep talking about the chase right here. There was a reason for that for so long that Rylas was considered a uh, an AoE spell on the E. You could only get the 15% slow on. The moment it was changed and Cassiopeia's come into vogue, you remember that if you keep reapplying a 35% slow, it's so much power coming out of one item pickup. Oh, yeah, and now Choo Choo's actually managing to pick up a needlessly large rod as well. And we haven't spoken really about Cassiopeia's incredible potential for massive ability power numbers with that passive. You, of course, get pretty much a free Rabidon's death cap. 
Yeah, 30, just by getting poisoned. Absolutely, the 30% yeah. extra AP on the ultimate. You can add another death cap, and then damage really gets silly right there. I'd expect a Zonya's right here, just because Cassiopeia does so much damage in close range. She can be assassinated down quickly, but the eventual death cap will really get some multiplicative action going. Yeah, I was going to say, this is an opportunity for some multiplicative things to go on, of course. I was going to practice that word that you just told me before. But oh, you pulled it off pretty well. I didn't have the opportunity to there, Papa Smithy. You were just right there. Oh, spear to the head. Dragon not going to take too much damage from that one. It is going to get started here. And Avant-Garde looking to potentially contest this one. And they do have the siege potential. They may, may need to get a whole lot of damage down to Legacy to really be competitive, though. Is the Solar Flare going to be flashed out of? from Choo Choo's, doesn't have any more escape summoners available. Of course, that ghost was on cooldown. Dark Binding not gonna find Mizui. And the dragon gonna s just, just go back to sleep. But with, the pit. but with both of those uh, escape summoners down, gonna have to be so careful with his positioning right here, Choo Choo's, and just literally gonna have to hang back, do a little bit less harass, and just be very careful to not be assassinated. Well, we actually getting caught by that Dark Binding, but no aggression as the dragon, the third dragon, going to go down for Legacy Cardroon. Fancy footwork going to dodge out of the way of that stun just, just by the tip. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. One to five now. Legacy stretching their lead about 5,000. And these Dark Bindings are finding Chelby wherever he is. Yeah, even out of vision that time. It was just very impressive tracking coming out from Egym right here. Speaking of impressive, 43 CS is the advantage between Taliwaka and Mizui's uh, Callista right here, and she's uh, in a bit of trouble on this mini-map. Oh, yeah. Actually dead. There in the bottom side of the map. Kadra just going to solo out Mizui. Oh, my goodness. And the split push now begins. Yeah, and remember, there was three pink wards in this jungle to def give them defensive options here, Avant. And all three are being cleared out right here. 300 gold down. They get that assassination on the Callista to give themselves the complete monopolization of this uh, blue side jungle. And Avant, they're just running out of room to farm to get themselves back in the game. And yeah, the thing that I want to know here as well is Ejim's percentage of skill shots hit, just in general, because he has been so impressive on the likes of, uh, of course, Thresh and now Morgana. Really looking great on those, like the, the skill heavy, the mechanically heavy support champions. And it does make you wonder out loud why we saw the Janna come out in that first series. Maybe it was just global trends and going, well, John is very much in vogue. She's super powerful, but you put him on an engaged champion here, e Jim, and you get the results like this game. Oh, he looks fantastic. Scrying Orb going to spot the rotation from Legacy here as they head to the top side. Ooh, Dark Binding going to land on a Mizui. No surprises there. Thanks very much, e Jim, for confirming what we were just talking about. Bad Game Log going to be forced out here as well as he's transformed. Avant Guard have a slight opportunity here to utilize their Mega Nar, but not going to be able to as Legacy. All going to back off. They did a decent dent to that inner turret, but reserved play coming through from Legacy. There's some wonderful power spikes coming out of the, the car, of, of Kajid and this whole Legacy lineup right here. The one item power spikes compared to their compatriots are just so much more significant. Infinity Edge versus Blade of the Ruin King. Now we see a zeal on the parts of a Phantom Dancer being added. It was Trinity Force against the Sunfire Cape. Now we see the tankiness coming through on Aurelia right here. You can just really tell the advantage that Legacy have grown just in terms of the items right here. 6,000 gold worth of very worthwhile stats being picked up. And Avant, all they can really do is hang back and try and clear waves. Yeah, they need to turtle this game out for as long as they possibly can. Of course, not too many deaths on many members apart from Shelby here. They are looking just to try and snag it, stagnate this one. Is the Sonic Wave going to find Shelby after the kick? But he is going to be okay. Not too much follow-up from Legacy as Carbon just asserting his dominance here. And, it was the, and again, it's the first jungle Nidalee we've seen. And it's been expertly dismantled by Legacy right here. From the start of this game, parting themselves to force a 2v2 at their jungle at the red buff right there. Understanding that in a skirmish, there's just no way for Nidalee to have an advantage, especially given that we're expecting Cassiopeia to rotate that much faster to a jungle invade than the kind of immovable artillery like Xerath right here. They've been in Chelby's face the whole game. We talked about Chelby as kind of the barometer of this Avant team. When he's ahead, you see Avant going in aggressively, looking to pick up advantages. But when he's been relegated to playing so far behind like this series, they're struggling. Difficult. Oh, Dark Binding going to uncharacteristically miss onto Chelby here as he pounces through the brush and Telewacker 
Gonna lose his spinning axes. Just gonna head down to this bottom side and continue clearing these waves, extending that CS lead. Avant Garde, every member may have spotted Choo Choo's out here as the Arcane Pulse not gonna land. Nice match playing Gay's gonna get a couple of stuns. Fate's Call not gonna find its mark, but there's the Zenith Blade. Choo Choo's is gonna die without even being able to use that Zonya's Hourglass. Stand aside under Johnny to stop the follow up engage. And Avant Garde, they get a pick. Yeah, for once they're able to make Choo Choo's pay right there for his aggressive positioning. The last few times Legacy have done that, they've been the ones picking up kills but at least Avant understand all they can really do at this point is start to ward up their jungle and farm safe and they pick up an exit kill doing just that. Yeah, Bear Game will actually going to teleport here to this top side, stop the split push from Kadrid here. Does have himself a Sunfire Cape, so, so some early stats coming through on this now. He's going to be feeling pretty good about himself. Legacy all gets spotted out by the arrow from Mizui. Nicely shot in there just to try and stop any funny business and Legacy going to have to just... Slink away, tails between their legs. Bag Emerald taking so much damage from Cardred here, and that was a crit, I believe. The flash going to be used from Bag Emerald to get himself out of here, and Cardred's so scary on this Aurelia. And while the Sunfire Cape gives him a little bit of wave clear right here, the lack of Aranduins means that Aurelia's going to stick on now permanently, and he just can't afford to enter that lane without the ward coverage, because he, uh, he just can't deal that Aurelia. And he's also forced to build so much magic resist as well just because of the consistent damage that's going to come through from this hyper carry in the mid lane, this Cassiopeia. Yeah, Cassiopeia does a lot of AoE magic damage. He's going to incidentally pick up so much, but if he goes too far into magic resist right here, he's just never going to stand up to Taliwak as Draven. 0-0 zero, zero Draven at, four, at 24 minutes into the game. I'm going to have to mouse over his adoration when I get a chance, but uh, that first kill is going to have... Maybe even a record amount of gold cashed in in one buy. Yeah, that is going to be a jackpot come in for Tallywhacker. And we'll see exactly what that number is because I'm also incredibly interested. And oh, Draven just in general is so terrifying when there's that sort of the chance that he could explode and pick up so much money and just finish this gigantic item just out of nowhere. And as soon as he sort of comes back... You just die over and over again. A snowball item on an AD carry that's all about damage is it's just such an exciting mechanic because there's so much more potential for him. At this point, if he picks up a kill, I mean, the kill gold's going to be nice, but the cash is going to mean a straight Last Whisper, a straight Bloodthirster, basically any item he's looking for. Yeah, oh, Ejim actually going to face check this one here. Takes a lot of damage. The render comes through, and Johnny manages to get the Zenith Blade. There's the Fates calling to Carbon here, but... He is going to have the safeguard available, not going to be able to actually, as Toby going to come through. There's a petrifying gate, whirling death onto Mazui. Tallywhacker cashes in his adoration. Chelby bounces forward, Carbon with a beautiful safeguard, but it's not going to be enough as Chelby picks it up on the backside. But Mazui and Johnny did already fall down. Chelby just trying to farm up as he makes his exit. Is he going to have enough pounces as Cardred has so much movement speed? Chelby looking for a brush, pounces through it and. This could be the Benny Hill music moment here for Avant Garde. Yeah, not quite as much movement speed available for Nidalee as per the previous times, but <laughs> excellent pounce right there. Very nice Nidalee mechanics. Just going to try him back, but uh, finds E. Jin with his trouble. <laughs> actually going for the fight here as the Soul Shackles actually gets broken here from Shelby. He's on an expedition looking Green. to just clear out some creeps and wander around this base. And I think he knows that he's dead, but he kept them busy. Shades of Darien right there with his escape across the map. Just trying to buy time, but uh, Avant need a couple more of those moments just to clear ways right here. Get CS back into the game. They're now 8,000 gold behind, and the turrets are falling. They are. It's actually going to be a turret for Avant Guard here on the top side of the map. Unable to go and clear that one out as they were chasing after that kitty. And the um, kill actually went over to Ejim with no assist for the rest of the team. So Chelby doing a decent job here, of course. Ejim, not all that are uh, required to have too much gold. But I mean, it's... You know. And Tallywhacker cashed in. The bonus I did catch was 1372. So oh 1,372 bonus gold coming out of the Draven right there. Almost just basically 100 gold away from the Bloodthirster right here. Opening up a massive gold lead basically just from... Oh anyway, it's ADCS and the passive. So 4,000 gold basically is the lead for this Draven. Yep, think about it. That is a Trinity Force that he is in the lead. A That's big item. terrifying. That is just terrifying. Is he not going to be able to go anywhere near him? Bad game, well, probably not going to be able to either, either as he dodges out of the way of that Sonic Wave. Legacy, got to be pressured away from this Baron here, knowing that Kadra is in that bottom side. Does have that teleport available. And Legacy, they're playing a little bit more uh, scared than... Yeah, are otherwise required to, in my opinion. 
Yeah, they've been trying to be assertive, but remember they've been punished twice going for the aggressive invade in the red side jungle. Avant have spent a lot of gold this game on pinks, which is both necessary for them to, to not get strangled out of their own camps, but it's just delaying their power spikes in terms of items right here. You see, still no Runan's Hurricane completed on Callista against basically a three-item Draven at this point. The Randuin's finished as well on top of the Trinity Force here for Kaja, so the, the front line is very strong, and the damage is just not there to deal with the tank here earlier. But the one thing that we can talk about here for Avant-Garde is that Kensi's finished off that Rabidon's Death Cap, is now able to, finish, to clear out these minion waves just with two abilities. So that is definitely good news as far as the Avant-Garde ability to stall out this game. But we've spoken about Choo Choo's on this Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is terrifying in the later stages of the game, as is Aurelia. But the Siege is on now. This is where Avant looked the best, but they have to worry about warding their flanks right here. The Pink Wards do, does help against the potential ward hop initiate coming out from Carbon around the back on Lee Sin, but they need to consistently have excellent wards on their flanks, because if a team fight does start, they've got a lot of squishy members, and they're going to melt against all the damage on the Legacy side. And Karg is putting them on a timer, though, as he is split pushing this bottom side. Bear Game Wall is going to try and answer it, but you have to think that Kardrid has his number here as far as this 1v1 matchup is concerned. And Legacy, do they have the engage to stop the Siege? That's the real question. It's very difficult. You know, they're relying on a, a Dark Binding or some sort of flashy Lee Sin play for Initiate right here. I mean, they have excellent counter engage coming out of Choo Choo's on Cassio, but her engage potential is just so difficult because realistically, if she's getting in your face, you're probably running in the other direction, so no stun going to be guaranteed in that Petrifying Gaze. Again, it's all about warding their flanks and stopping the flank. That's the big engage potential coming out from Legacy. But I mean, Avant-Garde, after having sort of a horrible time in their jungle in the early stages of this game, they've fallen behind about 8,000 gold. Not every member is, you know, it's not, they haven't succumbed completely to the potential snowball from so many of these snowball-based champions on the side of Legacy. There is still hope here for Avant-Garde that things are looking very, very scary as Johnny actually might be caught out here. Dark Bunny going to find Mazui somehow. Has the Sonic Wave to come through as well. There's a petrifying gaze worth so much damage and Legacy just turning it on. Just to prove me wrong. The flank engage right here. Carbon's going on in bad game mode, but he's so tanky. Yeah, things are so difficult. Tallywhacker makes his way around as well. The Nara into a couple of members, but Tallywhacker cashes in some more stacks, and the Baron is now the call from Legacy. Tallywhacker just tanking that one up himself. It's no cares in the world. There's so much damage coming. The Bloodthirster for extra life still coming out. Tallywhacker can take the Dragon Baron so long, and Shelby, he's got to run. Yeah, he certainly does. Kensti and Chelby, the only ones alive. They do have a bit of siege here. Choshu's is actually going to fall down. And Kensti picks up two here as Chelby going to pick up another one. And the Baron does fall down right at the arcade. Not going to find Egypt. Neither does a spear find Tallywhacker, who's completely out of mana. So not going to be able to build up any of these spinning axes as Kaja going to dance around, try and clear out this wave. Legacy, however, they were needlessly aggressive. They had their jungler and another and their mid laner dueling for some exit kills while there was the 80 carry in the top lane to try to take down the Baron. It was almost needless for them to go the extra kills. In harassing away the enemy members, they gave away a couple of Baron buffs. Yeah, Kadrid actually going to be teleporting in here. Is Blade of the Ruin King going to slow him down just a little bit? Black Shield going to come through as well. Transcendent Blade's actually ripping Chelby apart. Mizui trying to dance around this one as Johnny's found his way in, and the slow to land, but no real follow-up from that Solar Flare. Oh, no follow-up. The Dragon is live, though, and they might get their first Dragon to at least slow down the objective snowball from Legacy. Baron is available here, it has been picked up by Legacy, but the Consolation Dragon to come through from Avant-Garde and Mizui just trying to kite this one around. Kadra going down quite low here, doesn't get stunned because of that beautiful Black Shield. Fate's Call going to get Johnny out of, prob out of trouble. And Legacy just going to try and continue the pressure. Is that kind of boss going to go a little bit wide? Worth knowing that Legacy actually already got the fourth Dragon, so that would have potentially been a fifth dragon coming out right there. So it would have been a massive burst of power. So denying that buff right there at least gives them a bit of time to delay and farm up. Yeah, they're going to continue rotating around here. Of course, four turrets now to one in favor of Legacy. They're going to be able to steal away this blue buff very easily. The Twin Fang doing a whole lot of work on that one. And they're going to go back to this top inner turret. And they're just more than happy to tank that one up. The spear's going to land, as is Arcano Pulse. Right at the Arcane, looking for Ejim here. He lands a couple of bolts, a nice black shield. He's going to get him out of trouble. And Legacy's just going to back off. They have the empowered recall right here. They have all the options here to Legacy. 
Doesn't look like they want to push in right here. I mean, Avant have been very smart in delaying this game. Other teams would have fallen much earlier just because of the intense pressure that especially Chelby's been under. Chelby's been very well held this game, but he's managed to get himself relevant again. 4-4-2. Four, four, They've got at least control of their own red side jungle. It's a small victory, but it's something for Avant. Yeah, Chelby actually the leader in kills on his team by quite a margin here as well, managing to utilize those spears. 30 CS ahead of his jungle opponent, and he's built like a mid laner. He has built like a mid laner. That's what we see coming out of these jungle nidlies. Cooldown reduction and AP, just like the old days right there. They don't have quite the assassination potential from the spear, but once they get into that melee form, the Q damage is huge. Oh, yeah, most definitely is. And See whether he can actually utilize it because, of course, the rest of his team very far behind. He's going to take a lot of damage here. The render comes through from Mizui as well, but he's going to be okay. He's just going to back on out of this one as Legacy continue to strangle out the vision. And we have another slight pause coming in, but we were mentioning Chelby might be the saving grace here for Avantgarde if they can stay in this game. If they can, he at least provide it doubles down on the, the poke pressure they have with the Xerath, with the Nidalee, a lot of long-range poke. Again, we were talking about how important it was to ward their flanks because they're very oppressive in a siege situation. They can get so much line damage down that they can start to pick up these neutral objectives, specifically the turrets, and just start to close down that big gold lead that's been opened up by Legacy. It's just difficult because when you have fed divers like Aurelia who can potentially teleport in and start a fight themselves, it's going to kind of undo the strong siege they have. Yeah, and is the split push going to be the answer here? Because Cardred has shown that nobody can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe, and it's going to take decisive siege work here from Avant-Garde to really make this one work because they have to be right on point with their skill shots and get enough damage down to make sure that Legacy can't re-engage if they're under the tower all the time also knowing exactly where their side waves are. It's a good point. I mean, especially because as, at least so far, Nah hasn't been able to stand up to Aurelia. He can't really harangue or really even hope to cancel her TP because, of course, he only has the ultimate as an interrupt. And it's unlikely to be in position to use that in a, in a 2v2 offlane right there. So they don't have a lot of answers to Aurelia. And if they get the right wards down, they start to deny these pinks, get those aggressive wards on the flanks of Avant right here. The re-engage from Aurelia will, be, will spell doom for them right here. So the, so the split push is the correct adaptation right here. Ejim get the aggressive wards, start the split push. And so far, at least, we've seen no answer from Avant. Yeah, there hasn't been too much that they can do. They have been clinging to dear life in this game, and still that fifth dragon is being threatened on the side of Legacy, and they've got that Baron rotating around them. And it is certainly a time where Avant-Garde really need to just try and knuckle down and batten the hatches until this onslaught is over. But with Baron buff, I mean, these melee minions are going to be so powerful. Very, very difficult to hit deal with as we hop back onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen. The pause is going to be over and the wave clear to come through from Kensti. And he's got a bit of damage. Now has a blasting one. Almost going to have that Void Staff completed. But look at Tallywhack and just tear these towers apart. And yeah, when you see Kaja with the huge health bar right there, he's on the late game Aurelia right here. Even if you're Kensti, even if you have the long range wave clear, you're always conscious of a dive right here. If he dies instantly, this Avant team is just going to be undone. They don't have much of a tanky front line mm. to support right there. So the implied zone pressure of this Aurelia is stopping the strong wave clear from Zerf from being the big factor in this game. Looking very difficult for Avant-Garde to get back into this one. I still believe, I still believe that something can happen here as they have the opportunity of one of those sort of amazing NAR ultimates to come through. Chelby might land the spear to end all spears, but things are looking really, really good so far for Legacy. And you have to say that Avant-Garde just not looking like the team that managed to win finals. It's been difficult for them to find their feet here and We'll see whether they can make a change when Porky comes back. Of course, they're rocking that top side. Bad Game Lol has been doing the best that he possibly can for their team, but Porky was a star player for Avant Garde. And it's, they're really struggling without him and, of course, their world-class bottom line. And they've started to show some of the, the smart adaptations that we'd expect out of a former top team in terms of actually doubling down on vision control. But kind of the, the knock-on effect right there is they've spent perhaps a 1,000 to just over a 1,000 gold on Pink Wars just to get... Uh, control over this bot uh, blue side jungle right here and it's been consistently sweeped out right here they've been consistently spending money on consumables when they're 13,000 gold it's actually an implied larger lead for legacy because we know how much gold they've been spending on pink wards right here and legacy they just need that one uh, decisive pick and advanced comp unfortunately will just kind of be undone 
Yeah, and we'll see whether Avant does fall into a trap of having to get that done. Legacy still have to break the base, and they don't have a Baron in order to do it. It is up in another two minutes, as is Dragon. A potential trade may be opted in for here if Avant Guard can make their way around to it, but it's a very difficult one because if Legacy managed to get that fifth Dragon, that buff, adding those 12% stacks, really, really dangerous. Things could go horribly, even if Avantgarde traded for a ban. And especially, it's not just the 12%. Of course, doubling that movement speed buff as well yeah. to 10%. We talked about flanking gauges kind of being Legacy's only way to get in there. And Aurelia with 10% extra move speed on top of the Trinity Force and her natural tenacity. Very scary proposition. Oh, yeah. The Trinity Force boots too. Oh, my gosh. Things are going to be very, very scary. Has picked up the Home Guard boots, so not going to have the Alacrity enchantment for even more movement speed, which I thought would have been cute. But Teleport Home Guard will be making Cardroot potentially the fastest Aurelia in the history of Aurelias. It's Kenstie going to clear out this wave again. Still able to clear out very, very effectively on this Zerath, but he's been completely stifled this game, unable to make the plays that Kenstie would want to. I mean, basically everyone on Advanced side has had to play a reactive, whether it's buying more pink wards than they want to or just playing a lot more safe than they look to. I mean, you look at the, the difference in items and CS between Taliwaka and Missouri. It's night and day right here. We have basically four completed AD carry items, a oh very expensive all-in AD carry build right there compared to uh, two items and the startings of a third one. So super struggling as Missouri. It's going to be night and day team fights and the teleport's coming in. Yeah, Soul Shack is actually going to be focused on Chelby here as Carbon looks over for it. The pounce to come through as the poison lands from Choo Choo's. And look at the damage as Tallywhacker picks up the last kill. But Choo Choo's with that Twin Fang plus the Spinning Axe. Chelby's whole health bar was red. I mean, Choo Choo's was doing a third of the health of an Italy every Twin Fang. And we usually get four to five Twin Fangs in in one rotation. That tells you how much damage this Cassiopeia is putting out. The Dragon's in trouble. Yeah, Dragon's going to be taken here for free. Of course, Shelby with the smite is down. And Carbon going to be able to lock that one down here as well. The Avant-Garde members trying to make take a consolation blue buff. He's going to be taken here by Xerath, but Bad Game all taking so much damage from Choo Choo's who's popped that ghost here on the top side. However, Kensi's getting singled out. The Black Shield onto Ejim. Kensi unable to find a follow-up kill, and Cardred just going to beat him to death. Whirling death, speaking of which, going to come through. Not going to find the kill for Tallywhacker. He's got other things on his mind. They want to crack the base of Avant-Garde, and Legacy are looking unstoppable today. Yeah, with Kensi down, just not enough wave clear to deal with these people pushing in right here. Five oh members. The, each axe is chunking down Shelby. He's got AP, but no resist to speak of. Oh, yeah. And that was after a primal surge that you saw his health bar. That was more than half of the health of that Nidalee. As Choo Choo's takes a spear to the head. Still doing relevant damage here. As Cardred not going to take any of that at all. And two inhibitors in a matter of seconds for Legacy. They're just going to pick up the Baron because why the heck not? Absolutely. Might as well double down on all those multiplicative stats. Get all the Baron buffs as Love well. that word. Freshly swapped. We've been, it's been the word of the day so <laughs> far. It feels like 2,200 gold on Draven. A bevy of gold on everyone else right here. A Baron buff in their pockets too. And then it's going to have five-man recall like the Mighty Ducks or something. Oh, it that looks was strong. fantastic. Just see that coordination. That is synergy. Ladies and gentlemen, Legacy showing you exactly how to do that one. Of course, a little bit um, sort of the tip of the pyramid, not that great. Need to work on their flying V, as you mentioned, but looking fantastic, our Legacy. And looks to be the circling of the drain for Avant-Garde, very unfortunately, unless they can get a hero 15 team, team fights in a row. You have to think tomorrow's scrim block. Going to be just refining that teleport technique there for Legacy to, <laughs> to cap on these victories they're coming into, but uh, they've caught Shelby. Yeah, it's actually Soul Shackle's not going to find its mark, but Tallywag is just going to kill him instantly with the ultimate Mazui, taking so much damage as the kickback onto Bad Game Well, just into the back of the team. Normally a bad idea. Does get a nice two man. Nah, down, but he's just going to fall as soon as Tallywhacker gives him his attention. And Mizui, the last man standing, accepts just, his fate. Yeah, that was very cute. He spotted himself with that scrying orb. Very cute. Yeah, some people see the light. There wasn't time right there. There was an <laughs> oncoming train, squashed him down. And Legacy are going to win this game. Yeah, that was a Callista in the headlights, ladies and gentlemen. As Cardred tanking up two turrets and doesn't even really notice here as Legacy just going to evaporate the Nexus turrets. The Nexus to follow as well. 5-0-3, 6-0-3. The scoreline's looking huge for Legacy. 
and they have had the day of their lives here in the second week of the OPL. Beautiful performance. And it was that assertive play from level one, that out rotation at level one, putting a Nidalee behind a buff as a jungle Nidalee. A wonderful snowball champ. If she can get ahead, those damage gains can be very relevant, but Chelby was forced out of the game and stifled out by Legacy's excellent play in the enemy jungle. Yeah, and having that buddy system in the jungle as well, having Kadrid always with Carbon meant that there was no opportunity for that sort of invade tactic to come through from Chelby and really take advantage of Carbon. But we've got a replay, and let's just have a look at how Avant-Garde were torn apart by Legacy. All right, so let's roll the tape right here. We're already 39 minutes, and Baron Buff is up right here. So it's a very late game fight, but I'm sure we're going to see plenty of deletion coming out of Legacy <laughs> right here. So Chelby's at half health, and this uh, we're going to see a big burst of damage coming in from Taliwaka. Completely annihilates him with the Whirling Death. Taliwaka, the late game Dravens that we're starting to see have so much bloodthirst to lifesteal that they can basically be a frontliner alongside Aurelia. You can't really tell Aurelia away from the uh, Draven because they're just in the frontlines doing damage, and then Mizui accepts his fate. Yep. Sees the light. The scrying orb from above lets him know that Yep, this is this is right for you now, Mizui, unfortunately. You can it's finally just be end. quiet and uh, <laughs> not so restless anymore. Yeah, it was an unfortunate situation, but Avant-Garde, they have got many more tests coming up. They've got the ability to bounce back here, of course, a team that has been well established. But let's have a look at our next matchup. Of course, we are going to be having next up Team Immunity taking on Sudden Fear. We'll see whether Sudden Fear can bounce back from that horrible defeat in the hands of Legacy and answer towards immunity. But guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs>